Hey there, friends. By now, everybody has probably seen the video where allegedly the FBI visited a guy because of someone he met online, quote unquote. Let me show you the video real quick, and then let's discuss it and also discuss the ties, whether direct or indirect, it may have on the new FISA law that got voted back into place by a bunch of turncoats, Democrat and Republicans. This is David from the Sacramento FBI. What? What is it? Looking to talk to David. For what? Uh, hoping he can help us with someone he met online. So. All right. Yeah, I'm still hey. gonna record. Yeah. Um, what is it? What is it uh, concerning? I'll tell you if you turn it off. I'm not gonna turn it off. So. Okay, the person we're here to talk about, I can't say it on the camera. Okay, but it's well not then, about you. Okay, well then I can't. I'm not gonna speak. If you're not gonna say it on camera. What have you been up to? None of your business. Okay. You're refusing an interview? No, thanks. few things to unpack here, guys. First of all, best advice I could give you is uh, don't answer the door. Uh, clearly, they don't have a warrant. Had they had a warrant, they would have shown the guy. So they had no reason to be there. So if you would have refused to speak to them, they would have left just like they left here. They had no warrant. If they've got a warrant, let them show it to you. And then you need to contact your attorney, of course. I would not have walked outside until talking to my attorney. I probably wouldn't have gone outside at all, but I would have been curious what these FBI supposedly guys wanted. Now, I will say this. One, the Jackie Chan guy does look like FBI because you do see a flash of his ID. I've got a couple of screenshots of that. Doesn't mean it's a legitimate FBI ID. Uh, again, these guys look completely unprofessional, a couple of slobs, at least for guys who are representing the feds. Not that we have a high standard of those guys anymore, but we used to, right? So these two slobs, I think the Jackie Chan guy is FBI. The other guy, the Liberace looking guy, he clearly is a sheriff's deputy, a uh, local sheriff's deputy more than likely. And you know how that's, those guys typically do that. They back up the feds whenever the feds go to somebody's house. Plus he's probably more familiar with the area. So that's probably why he's the essentially the escort. Now, after saying they won't say the guy's name online that supposedly they're there to talk to David about, the fake FBI guy, sheriff's deputy guy, Liberace, confirms his gayness as he waves to the camera like he's happy to be on TV, or unhappy to be on TV more than likely. Jackie Chan just smiles. Then Liberace asks, what have you been up to? That really blew my mind. That shows the boldness of these guys knowing that the brass up top fully supports everything they do because there's no way a guy would just randomly ask, what have you been up to, to somebody that they don't have a warrant for if he thought that his supervisor or anybody up the chain would have a problem with how he conducted himself. Clearly, they have the guidance to be able to do this kind of stuff. Now, when Liberace says you're refusing to interview... You're refusing to interview? That's a trap. That is an absolute trap. At this point, David should have said, no, you're refusing to interview me 
if I'm running my camera because that's where it stopped. What is it uh, concerning? I'll tell you if you turn it off. I'm not gonna turn it off. So. Okay, the person we're here to talk about, I can't say it on the camera. Okay, but it's well not then, about you. Okay, well then I can't. I'm not gonna speak. If you're not gonna say it on camera. They would not talk to him as long as he was recording. So these two goons are the ones who refused to interview and take part in it from that point forward. Not the guy. This is an entrapment issue. This is where these guys are trying to have him say, no, I'm not refusing. And then all of a sudden they say, well, you turned us away, so you refuse to interview. Got to be careful. The camera in this case likely saved this guy. Because without any kind of video proof, they would have said he simply refused to interview. Now, not that that should have stuck because they didn't have a warrant and there was no reason. They even said they weren't there to talk about him. They were there to talk about some guy he met online. But nevertheless, the video probably saved this guy because it clearly shows they are the ones who refused. Speaking of hierarchy and higher ups, note that Liberace has a lot of keys on his belt. So this is a clear sign of importance. This guy must be a very important guy as the number of keys normally dictate. Now, I'm not sure if this is a flex move or just maybe the guy showing off or maybe an offer, but Liberace also does this weird little thing with his tongue and his cheek towards the guy they're talking to before he gets mad and shrugs his shoulders and nods to Jackie Chan, hey, let's go. After they leave, then you see that they're still talking out by the car. I wish that David, the guy who's recording here, would have just continued to blatantly in their face film. Obviously he was, and I'm not, I'm not dogging the guy or picking on him, but obviously he was a little bit intimidated by the guys because when they would make eye contact with him, he would turn away and at one point just went back in his apartment. So it does look like, um, in my opinion, it would have been a better look to just walk out where they were. They were still on his property. I think they may be standing in the road, but he could have stood on his property and just continued to film them until they left because they were obviously talking about him. Not sure where they went after that. I've seen some people say that they went to talk to other neighbors, but I don't have any proof of that. Why does all this matter? A point of contention in DC all this week was illegal surveillance or warrantless surveillance on the American people by the FBI and other federal organizations this week. This was something that was up for renewal in Congress and the Republicans, a few of them anyway, had put up an amendment that stated that you had to have a warrant before you would start sifting through all the social media and uh, correspondence of Americans. This FISA act was originally set up to surveil, supposedly, foreign people who were talking to people stateside. Well, obviously that gets abused and has been abused. Heck, it was used against Trump uh, during 2016 to 2020. But nevertheless, this is something that has been widely abused. And some of the better people, I'm not going to say good people, but some of the better people in Congress wanted to say, no, wait a minute, you have to have a warrant from a federal judge before you can go digging through without permission Americans' social media or any other emails, whatever electronic correspondence that they have. Republicans and Democrats voted against that. I might also mention that there's a caveat in there that carves out where members of Congress and the Senate do not apply to this or the rules don't apply to them in terms of this. In other words, they can't be surveilled. So once again, rules for thee and not for me. And again, both sides, this is a true bipartisan effort to hammer and to trick and to surveil illegally the American public, disregarding completely the Fourth Amendment. You think I'm exaggerating? Section 702 has faced opposition before, but it became especially fraught in the past year after court documents revealed that the FBI had improperly used it almost 300 times thousand times. The amendment that the House of Representatives shot down would have added significant privacy safeguards on the law, including the requirement that intelligence agents had to get a warrant in many cases before searching through emails and other digital communications belonging to U.S. citizens. The bill Congress did pass, meanwhile, codifies some of the most troubling aspects of Section 702, According to privacy advocates, the legislation still needs to pass in the Senate, where fewer representatives are interested in significantly reforming the law. It will pass the Senate, and of course, Joe Biden is going to sign this in the law. 
Joe Biden is one of the ones that is taking full advantage of this type of stuff. All of this is a train wreck at the same intersection that hasn't gotten there yet. And what I mean by that is, you look at this video. They are illegally talking to this guy with no warrant. They're bullying this guy. They're trying to intimidate this guy for whatever reason. Because he talked to somebody else online. That's it. So this already, <laughs> they use this FISA law to do what they did to get to this guy's apartment. So this is that law in action. No warrant required. And they came over here without a warrant even. Now, again, they surveilled his social media without a warrant. And then they came to his house to talk to him without a warrant. This is the dangers of that act in action. On top of that, conservatives are looked at, and anybody on the right, they call them the far right, the extreme right, the mega right. Anybody on the right is what it really means. Anyone on the right who doesn't agree with everybody on the far left is now considered far right, extreme right, or white supremacist. Joe Biden just claimed this past year that the white supremacists are the greatest danger to America. The most dangerous terrorist threat to our homeland is white supremacy. Not China, not Russia, not Iran. White supremacists are the greatest danger. While there are no attacks by white supremacists to anybody in the United States, there are no attacks. The white supremacists, wherever they are and whoever they are, they're not doing anything. Yet we see other people who are not white supremacists constantly killing, beating up, burning, raping, and doing other things. So I'm led to believe that either they're doing a really good job against these quote-unquote white supremacists out there and ignoring everybody else, or maybe that never really was a threat anyway. And just this past week, almost as if to say we're going to be using FISA against Trump again, Joe Biden came out and said that Donald Trump was the greatest threat to quote democracy and to the elections. What, in your view, constitutes the primary threat to freedom and democracy at home? Donald Trump. So these guys are clearly gearing up for what I do believe is a full-scale effort rolling into the election later this year to do all they can to discredit as many people as they can and maybe at some point start arresting people because the more people that you can arrest, the more you intimidate a lot of other people out there. And even maybe the intimidation efforts will just ramp up, maybe not even arrests. But at some point, there will be people, and I'm not trying to say that that any of you guys out there are like this, because I believe we have strong-minded people who watch this channel. But there will be people who will be intimidated. If you go to somebody's neighbor's house who's a little bit, you know, shaky, like not maybe the strongest willed person in the world, and you see the FBI over there asking them questions without a warrant and bullying them, and you see the neighbor freak out, you might be less likely to share that next post that shows Hunter Biden with a crack pipe in his face and hanging out with prostitutes with weapons on his side, even though he's a junkie. You might be less likely to share that post of Joe Biden engaging in illegal activity with the Chinese Communist Party as far as receiving funding from them. You see what I'm saying? All of what they're doing could very easily affect the election going forward and make a difference as far as intimidating and pushing people. You may not see what's happening, but they some of these people may quietly back away and not be so loud and boisterous as to tell people what they see and what's really going on and sharing things out there. That's my fear here, and obviously it can be used a whole lot worse than that. A lot more than intimidation. Just the people who have been arrested for January 6th are a perfect example of what our government is capable of. So really sad to see this. Um, these two guys out in Sacramento, it, again, clown show. I put a video out last week of three people, two guys and a woman, uh, trying to intimidate somebody. We're going to see more and more of this. These are people who have videoed these types of people coming to talk to them. Imagine how many of these people are not swift enough to grab their phone and start recording as soon as they see these people come to the door. How much is this happening? And we don't know about it. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry. I thought this was America. Please don't